the most terrifying sounds of World War II. Sounds hold an eerie power, a capacity to conjure raw emotion and vivid memory with mere vibrations in the air. During World War II, this power turned sinister as the conflict birthed a cacophony of noises that became the soundtrack of dread for those who endured them. From the shrill wails of air raid sirens to the ominous growls of tank engines, these were the sounds that signified destruction and despair. They reverberated through the bones of soldiers and civilians alike, leaving psychological scars as deep as the physical. This video ventures into the auditory heart of World War II's darkness, exploring the most terrifying sounds that shaped a generation's nightmares. We start with the whistle of falling bombs. A harrowing sound that turned night skies into canvases of dread. As darkness enshrouded the cities, the air raid sirens would unleash their foreboding wail, piercing the silence and igniting a visceral fear in all who heard it. The quiet of night was shattered, replaced by the sinister symphony of incoming destruction. The whistle, initially a distant hum, would rapidly swell into a terrifying screech as bombs carved through the atmosphere heralding ruin from the skies. No campaign of the Second World War has aroused more controversy or caused as much feeling as the all-out bombing offensive against Hitler's Third Reich. These bombs, often dropped from the bellies of the Heinkel HE-111s or other menacing bombers of the Luftwaffe, were designed for devastation. The infamous SC-250s a standard general-purpose bomb would release a shrill as the air rushed over its fins, creating a sound that became synonymous with imminent devastation. The larger HC-4000, a heavy bomb capable of levelling city blocks, would produce an even deeper, more guttural roar as it plummeted earthward. This auditory horror was not confined to the European theatre, in the Pacific, the American B-29 superfortresses dispensed their payloads with precision, the blockbuster bombs whistling through the tropical air as they fell towards Japanese industrial targets. The sound of these bombs, designed to shatter morale as much as to dismantle infrastructure, was a psychological weapon, preying on the minds of those who could do nothing but wait and hope for survival. The strategic deployment of these bombs also evolved with the war. Early in the conflict, the Luftwaffe used the scream of the Stuka's Jericho trumpet, a siren attached to the dive bombers, to amplify the terror. However, as air defenses improved, high altitude bombing became the norm, and the whistle of the bombs themselves became the primary harbinger of destruction. The impact of these bombs was catastrophic. Historic cities like London and Coventry in the UK and Dresden and Hamburg in Germany were reshaped by the relentless bombing campaigns. Each whistle marked the descent of explosives that would not only transform the physical landscape, but also deeply scar the psyche of a generation. Machine guns are up next. Their fire are constant in the sounds of war. The rattle of machine gun fire emerged as one of World War II's most persistent harbingers of doom. This was not the solitary crack of a rifle, it was an industrial chorus of death. The sound of the MG-42, known infamously as Hitler's buzzsaw due to its high rate of fire, 
The rapid discharge of these weapons created an unending metallic roar that spoke of inescapable danger and omnipresent death. The psychological impact of this continuous barrage was profound. For the infantry, the staccato beat of machine guns could pin down platoons for hours, shredding through ranks with ruthless efficiency. The fear of being hit by gunfire paled in comparison to the sensory assault of the noise itself, a continuous echo that reminded everyone the Reaper lurked, shrouded in the smoke and rubble. The deafening blast suppressed morale, fostering a sense of hopelessness as the cacophony engulfed the battlefield. For civilians, the sound of machine guns was a stark indicator that the front lines had drawn perilously close. In occupied territories and cities under siege, the rattle would seep through the walls of makeshift shelters, a grim soundtrack to their disrupted lives. Each burst of gunfire was a psychological strike, a reminder that the war was not some distant event, but a present horror that could reach out and claim lives with indiscriminate appetite. Soldiers spoke of the machine gun's fire with a mix of respect and dread. Its report was an omen that commanded immediate attention, demanding a tactical response, often just to survive. The noise signified an enemy unseen, one that needed only to point their weapon in a general direction to deliver devastation. Machine gun nests and fortified positions where these weapons lay in wait became priority targets such was the fear they invoked. The imperative to silence them was as much about stopping the bullets as it was about ending the psychological siege to their sound imposed. Now they're 42. Beyond the immediate terror it inspired, the persistent drone of machine gun fire also had a numbing effect. Veterans recounted how, over time, one could become desensitized to the sound, a dangerous psychological shift that could lead to fatal complacency. For others, the noise became a trigger, a sound that, even decades later, could catapult them back to the war's darkest moments. The constant rattle of machine gun fire etched itself into the memories of those who heard it, an enduring reminder of life's fragility in the chaos of war. Then comes the boom of artillery, the heavy hitters of the battlefield. These fearsome barrages would begin with a distant boom, a low rumble that rolled across the landscapes escalating into a deafening crescendo as shell after shell arced through the sky. The ground would shudder with each impact as if the earth itself were recoiling in horror from the violence wrought upon it. The very air seemed to tremble with the force of the explosions, creating a terrifying din that echoed for hours or even days. Soldiers entrenched in the mud braced for shockwaves each man grappling with the dread of the unseen, yet all too close artillery. The waiting was agonizing, the knowledge that a direct hit could obliterate their position in an instant, a stark reality. The anticipation of the next barrage was a mental torment equal to the physical danger. Each soldier had to grapple with the randomness of survival, knowing that no amount of skill could deflect an incoming round. For civilians, the artillery's roar was the sound of an indiscriminate monster that could just tear their world apart without warning. The blast didn't just demolish buildings, they shattered the sense of safety that home once provided. 
The barrage was a reminder that nowhere was truly safe, that the war could reach into the heart of their lives and rip it out without a moment's notice. The psychological toll of living under constant bombardment was immense. Shell shock, now known as PTSD, became a common affliction, with the relentless artillery fire often being the breaking point. The noise itself became a weapon, one that wore down the will as much as the flesh. In the aftermath of the barrages, a haunting silence would often fall, a stark contrast to the chaos that had preceded it. But the respite was always temporary, the silence a mere interlude before the next round of shelling began. The cycle of noise and silence became a rhythm of war that no one could escape, with each round of artillery fire punctuating the narrative of World War II grimly. And the approach of armoured divisions in World War II was heralded by a distinctive, foreboding rumble. Tank engines with their heavy diesel growls announced their presence long before their steel forms came into view. This deep, resonant purring was the prelude to the arrival of metal bear moths that could reshape the very nature of a combat zone. In both urban and rural settings, the vibration of tank treads grinding against the earth or cobblestones sent a clear message. The battle was here, and it would be fought on an epic scale. In city streets, the rumble of tank engines created a claustrophobic terror. The advance of these armoured giants with narrow alleyways and over-debris turned familiar neighbourhoods into unfamiliar war zones. The sound of a single tank could echo off buildings, giving the impression of a much larger force and amplifying the anxiety of those waiting in ambush or hiding in fear. Out in the open fields, the sound carried differently. The steady drumming of treads against soil was a signal that open spaces were no longer safe, that the enemy could be closing in with rapid and decisive force. The ground itself seemed to churn with the passage of each tank, a reminder that these machines could traverse and dominate the terrain with ease. For the infantry, the sound of friendly tanks could be a morale booster, a sign that the cavalry had arrived. The noise of enemy tanks laid a psychological siege, constantly reminding those in its path of the impending force and armour that would soon be upon them. The noise encapsulated the inevitability of confrontation and the anxiety this raise could be paralysing. The tanks were not silent predators, but roaring heralds of the armoured assault, an inescapable aspect of the war that both terrified and awed those who stood in their path. Following the tanks, the shrieking Stukas announced a deadly dive. The Stuka dive bomber, with its terrifyingly distinctive siren, became an icon of airborne dread in World War II. As these planes plummeted from the skies in a high-speed dive, the sirens, dubbed the Jericho Trumpers, wailed a ghastly scream, engineered specifically to unnerve all who heard it. The Stukas were not just instruments of physical destruction, but also carriers of psychological warfare. Their shrieks designed to paralyze the enemy with fear even before the bombs hit the ground. The sound of the Stukas siren was a calculated tactic, exploiting the primal human fear of a predator's call. This sonic weapon turned the act of bombing into a multi-sensory assault, magnifying the terror of the attack. The Stuka's scream was a sound that people came to associate with imminent devastation, creating a sense of helplessness among troops and civilians alike. The psychological impact was so significant that the very memory of the sound could evoke anxiety long after the engines had faded into the horizon, cementing the Stuka's role 
as a harbinger of horror in the annals of warfare. The power of sound during World War II transcended the battlefield. It was a force that shaped lives, swayed the outcomes of encounters, and etched itself into the memories of those who endured. These sounds served as harbingers of conflict, companions in the midst of strife, and the heralds of reprieve. They tell of a time when the world was steeped in conflict, underscoring the profound influence that even the transient medium of sound can exert on our shared history. If you found this video interesting, please hit the like button. Drop a comment with your thoughts or any related stories you know. Subscribe and click the bell to get notified about new videos. Your comments and feedback help us make more videos that you'll want to see. Thanks for watching.